Hi guys, this is Tom Charms with the FujiNet Project, and I wanted to make a quick video with a status report on the RS-232 version of FujiNet and showing it being used in context on an IBM PC Junior. Well, what do we have here? So we have this FujiNet over here on the left-hand side here that connects up to any RS-232 serial port. It's not the fastest of communications methods, but it pretty much will work anywhere. So, like all FujiNets, you see right here, we have our connection to our physical interface, and we also have, uh, besides our wonderful FujiNet logo, the ability to take and insert micro SD cards into for local storage. But if we look on the, uh, on the back side here, we'll see a connector for a USB-C, which provides both power. It is required in this case because R32-232 doesn't provide power. It provides power and it provides a firmware flashing interface. It's not needed to hook up to a computer, so if you're not using it on a computer, just plug it up to a power brick, whatever. And then you've got the two uh, buttons, one of them for disk swap and the other for soft reset to reset the FujiNet device. So to move around here, since this is still very early on, the hardware works, but we're still getting a lot of the software together, I'm going to be using the web interface to take and mount various, uh, mount various disk images into the FujiNet here. And we'll also have a uh, monitor interface here, which will show the debugging information that comes back from the FujiNet. So you can see how things are going from the firmware side of things. With that, let's get started. We'll go ahead and start by basically just showing that this is a fairly standard FujiNet. Uh, I can access it via my web browser, PC Local, and I have over here on my left-hand side a list of hosts that I can connect to. One of them is my SD card slot, but I also have network file servers that you can take and connect to, and you can edit these to your heart's content. The point to servers that you want to use, including any local file servers that you wish to run, just like any other FujiNet. We'll go ahead and go to errata.online here, and we'll see here a list of folders for other platforms that we already support as well. We have an IBM PC folder here. Go into it. I've got some things here that I'm messing with here, but we've got a couple of applications and some miscellaneous disks that we can mess with here. So we'll go ahead and mount the first one here, which is news. And we'll make it run it read only and put it into slot number one. Then we'll take and go back. And we'll do the same thing for ISS. We'll put that in slot two. Okay. Now we'll take and do the same thing again for our PC Junior games disk to take and top it all off. Sorry. Wrong server. That's my personal server there. One more time. And we'll go to PC Junior games. Read. So now we've got these three images that are mounted over the internet on the server called errata.online. And as the FujiNet needs sectors from these disk images, raw disk images, it will take and ask for them over the network, bring them over to the FujiNet, and the FujiNet will then bring them into the. Since this is over RS232, the bottleneck is with the RS232. So now that we have this here, uh, since we don't have config yet, we have to do everything inside the web interface. We'll go ahead and mount everything, make sure everything's mounted. And once that's okay, we can then take and switch over to our monitor interface here. We will restart the PC Junior. And you'll see right here that we have a standard IBM PC Junior with 128K of RAM, an extended PC. It's running MS-DOS 2.10. But what is this? This is a config sys driver called FujiNet.sys, which provides access to the disk images that we've mounted over here in the web interface. It also provides a programming interface to access the network card and other devices of the FujiNet itself, all from a common interface. So as we take and make other physical layers, 
not just our S232. R232 is just the first pass. We also want to do parallel port. We also want to do an ISA bus version, and so on, and so on. And in each case, provide the same programming interface for each one of those through int F5. If you can help with any of these things, perhaps doing the hardware for an ISA bus version or a parallel port version, or you can help with the firmware or whatnot, feel free to hit us up on fujinet.online. There's a link to our GitHub. There's a link to our Discord. We would very much appreciate it. So with that, we'll go ahead and enter in. And I will go ahead and just show, this is a floppy that just has a couple of things on it. There's not much. It's got mode and I've got a little FujiNet utility called nget, which I can use for the network card to move files across if I want to. But look inside can fix this. There's not much there. Just the fact that I'm going to be using COM port 2, and then I'm communicating at 9,600 bits per second. Not the fastest thing, but the, the FujiNet serial device is not the bottleneck here. The FujiNet serial device can communicate uh, up the, the PC, uh, PC UARTs can communicate up to 115-200 BPS. The Fujinet R32-232 UART can actually go much faster than that, up to 4 megabits per second off the UART alone. Just something to think about. But with that, what do we get? Well, this is a standard PC Juno. There's no hard drives. I don't have any additional devices connected. This is just a basic PC Junior. But because we have this device driver, now we have other device, not other drives. Starting with drive C for our first mounted disk image. And if we do a directory on it, we can see that it's fetching the data and sending the data across. And we can see that is our news reader sitting in drive C here. I'm going to do one thing. Which to color here because by default it's black and white. And I am running off the composite display here. The news on news on drive C here. And as it comes in, it is literally taking and fetching the blocks from the internet dynamically and feeding them to the PC Junior. And the PC Junior is grabbing it as fast as it can. We have our first pass of our FujiNet newsreader here. This particular program dynamically adjusts itself as to whether or not you're running in 40 columns or 80 columns, color, black and white, monochrome, whatever, and adjusts the display appropriately. Go down here to science, for example. And what's actually going to happen, it's going to take and contact the web server for the newsreader, and it's going to take and pull down a JSON document. It's going to parse it and send the information back dynamically. This is all happening on the FujiNet, so the PC Junior doesn't have to work too hard. So now we can take and select, okay, let's select the second news item here, and it will take and fetch it down. There we go. Fetches the first page. We can read that. Go on to uh, the next page. And so on. When we're done reading this particular article, we can, of course, escape out. We have the option to take and read other uh, articles, or we can go read uh, other categories of news, should we wish. Or, no problem. They can flip through different things. Okay, oops. Looks like that particular file came through rather interesting. Anyway. So, with that, when we're done, we can take and escape out, escape out completely, and we find ourselves back at the same prompt. Now recall that we also answer it. If I take and do a directory on drive D, it does much the same thing. It goes, fetches the blocks that are needed, passes them back. MS-DOS is none the wiser. Of course, we can take and run this. And this particular program uses open APIs, passes back JSON data, the FujiNet parses it, and the PC Junior will take and display it. And since we have a full blown map in here, this program is about 34.5K in size. 
again, if you can help make a, a improve the RS232 version or the parallel port version or the ISA version, please hit us up on our Discord. Please come to our website, fujinet.online, to our GitHub, so you can see where things are at and find a place where you can help because, you know, great if you could help. Wait for this to come up. Okay, we have our data. Now, of course, this is an early version of the tracker here. There are a couple of bugs, particularly with the F time parser. So time, the time and date stamp is incorrect, but we're getting the correct position. So there we go. ISS tracker working just fine. They can out. Okay, great. Come back to our normal display. Yeah, again, early version. It's because uh, it's, I need to change it in, in an N86 call there. No big deal. Oh, the joys of x86 programming. So, also have all of this. We have the we have the opportunity to take and load uh, anything that we need to that MS DOS can load and deal with. It works just fine. I mean, if we wanted to, I could take and. copy a file it doesn't care it will just go okay sure no problem it'll do the reads bounce things back and forth and it's really none the wiser we've uh, tried to follow all the rules for making a very compliant ms dos driver and for making something that can actually run across all of the known versions of ms dos which is an interesting challenge in and of itself but you'll see that it had no problem taking and copying those files. So, I mean, of course, we can take and just run it. Sure, it'll take and load the game. There's a lot more left to be done. I mean, we really need, uh, we, we really need to take and now button down the software, finish up config so that we can take and mount files and whatnot on the, the uh, host PC just fine. Configure the network, set the wireless networking parameters, all of that. So this is still very early on. You can help with that, great. Uh, we have all of the other games and things that we've written, like Five Cried Stud, Fujitsu, and whatnot, that can also be uh, ported across. And the thing about games like Fujitsu and Five Cried Stud, as I've talked about in other videos and whatnot, is that they are cross-platform. It doesn't matter which platform you're playing on with these games, they can all take and play together. We're able to do things together with all of our various communities and i really hope that comes across here i'm going to go ahead and end the video here but i wanted to type, kind of give you a quick little uh a quick little look at how things were working here with the rs32 version of fujinet on the ibm pc and i wanted to do this using arguably the most cantankerous uh, version of the IBM PC itself, the IBM PC Junior. So, um, what do you think, guys? Feel free to comment down below. Feel free to hit me up on Facebook. Feel free to take a talk to us on the Discord. This is all for all of us. I want to take and see if we can build a community around this. So, until next time, have fun. <laughs>